Haley, and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys how to access a port. Now before I get started, I want to make a big disclaimer. Do not use this video to teach yourself how to access your own port. Uh, you need to be trained by a medical professional. I'm just going to be showing you how I access my port. And if you do have a port, and you see something that I'm doing that you think I could improve on, please leave it in the comments below. One of the ways that I learned how to take better care of my port is by learning from other people on how to better keep myself sterile, on how to just improve things, how to clean things better, and I really do appreciate that advice. So yeah, that's basically it. Let's get into the video. So the first thing I do before I access is I clean the entire bathroom. I'm gonna go ahead and start grabbing all of my supplies. My supplies are very disorganized right now. I hope to be doing a organization of this very soon. But yeah, let's just ignore that. So I'm actually going to wipe everything down one more time with peroxide, just very quickly, just to sanitize it. There we go. It's all nice and dry. All right, now that I have all my supplies in here, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and set them up in the order that I'm gonna use them. First, I'm gonna go ahead and put some Elma cream on. Um, this is basically lidocaine and prilocaine, and I'm just gonna go ahead and put it on top of the port. So we're just gonna set it on top. Then we're gonna take a piece of tape and kind of put it on top of there just while it's drying or not drying while it's soaking in so that I don't like bump into it or whatever. I should mention you can put the Elma cream on up to like an hour beforehand. Um, that's what I would ultimately prefer to do. However, today I just was out of time. So I'm probably just going to put it on for like 10 minutes before. Okay. So I'm ready to access. So I just washed my hands really well and dried them off with paper towel because paper towel tends to be cleaner than a reusable towel. So I'm gonna just go ahead and throw that in the garbage. So this angle is gonna be a little bit weird, but because of my bathroom setup, it's the best I can do. I will try to eventually get a better video with a better angle once I have a better setup where like I could put the camera across from me versus like above. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab a alcohol pad and take off the Alma creams. Okay. There we go. We don't have to make it super clean because we are going to go ahead and clean the area very well. So we're going to go ahead and take the iodine right here and we're going to go ahead and open it. This stuff is very messy. What I do is I grab the betadine and I kind of squeeze it off because there is so much liquid in there that it's just been soaking in that if you just don't squeeze it, it drips all over. This is just for the betadine. Um, just so you know, <laughs> the beta diet is just really, really messy. So now I have that and what I'm going to do, this is how I've been taught. There are different protocols depending on what hospital you use, what nursing company, etc. Um, I start in the middle and I scrub it and then in circular motions, I go around the port going outwards. You don't ever want to go outwards to inwards because then you are spreading the bacteria towards the port where this way you are spreading the bacteria away which is what you want. And when you're cleaning the area you want to clean everywhere that the um, bandage is going to be. So you want the whole area underneath the bandage to be cleansed. So now that my hands have betadine on it, I'm actually just gonna go ahead and wash my hands again. Okay, so I'm just going ahead and drying my hands again with some paper towel. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead up and set up our sterile field. We're gonna do this while the betadine is drying on the skin because you wanna make sure it's completely dry before we wipe it off. So another thing I just kind of caught myself doing, um, I was gonna try to dry my hands off. Never like wave air towards your port to get it to dry. Like don't ever like go like that. Don't ever um, access your port or do anything with your port with a fan on. Um, you don't want a bunch of drafts moving. That is because air moving into the port can actually cause bacteria to float into the port 
which is not good. So, oh, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and put on some hand sanitizer as well. Wow, my hand sanitizer just fell. Um, I just like to wash my hands and put hand sanitizer on just to be double cautious. Um, so I will be using hand sanitizer a lot throughout this process. Um, now that I've washed my hands and used hand sanitizer, I'm going to open this. You wanna make sure you are not touching anything inside. Once you touch an object, it is no longer sterile unless you have sterile gloves on. So I'm gonna throw that away. I'm going to pinch the mask. And the mask technically isn't sterile. Um, it, it's, a, it's sterile in the package, but once you take it out, it's actually not necessarily sterile because it is going on your face and your face is not sterile. With the mask, you pull it down and then you pinch it by your nose to make sure that it is on securely, just like that. And you will be wearing the mask the entire time you are accessing. So then you can go ahead and pinch your sterile field, which is this white thing right here. And then we're gonna push this over to the side. You're gonna open it up. Don't ever shake it to open it. And then you're gonna put the shiny side up. And then there's always a one inch barrier around the sterile field that you can touch because one inches around the border is not sterile. Um, so you never wanna put anything sterile on the one inch border. Next thing, I'm gonna leave everything else in here. Um, I actually don't need this stuff. Technically, I could throw it away. Um, because I don't use it. So I do use the skin barrier thing, but I don't use it until after I'm no longer sterile. So, all right, first thing is we're gonna take our IV 3000 and we're gonna put it onto the sterile field. So we're gonna open it up and do not touch anything inside. And then we're gonna set it on the sterile field. Just like that and then throw the wrapper away. Next, we need to put everything else on the sterile field. So like this saline flush. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and get our needle. There we go. Then we're gonna open our cleave connector and you can pinch it from the outside so you can hold on to it and then dump it on. There we go. The next step is a step that most people probably won't have to do, but like I mentioned, my infusion company does not supply me with alcohol swabs, so I have to use alcohol prep pads. These pads are sterile inside of the packaging. If you were to touch them with your bare skin, they would not, your bare skin, it would not be sterile. So what we are doing is we are going to open them and drop them onto the sterile field which can be a little bit difficult. All right, I think that's about it. We're gonna go ahead and use some hand sanitizer. And now this area should be dry by this point and we can go ahead and remove the betadine with alcohol. So I don't know where that ended, but we have our sterile gloves on and we are cleaning off the betadine from my skin. So we are just pinching the alcohol pads, scrubbing the center of the port, and moving outward. All right, the beaded iron is basically off. I'm gonna do it one more time with this small one. And then just to be safe, I'm actually going to go ahead and change my sterile gloves just because I have been touching things with um, this left one. Technically, this hand isn't super sterile anymore. This one is completely sterile. However, I'm just going to go ahead and change into a new pair of sterile gloves to do the rest of this procedure. Uh, procedure? I don't know why I'm calling it a procedure. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and take those gloves off. Again, we're gonna wait until the alcohol on my skin is completely dry before um, starting the next step, which is why it's good I'm changing gloves um, because this gives me some more time. So we're gonna go ahead and open the gloves. These gloves are a lot higher quality as you will be able to tell. As you can see, the gloves are a lot bigger. Again, slide it in. 
These are so much easier to get on. Then you can pull it down, grab this one, slide your hand in the cup, and slide this one in. Just like that. You do not want to touch the paper with your sterile hands. So we are going to drop that. And we're going to go ahead and prime our needle. What that means is basically we're just going to put saline through it. Um, I can touch all of these objects now because I am sterile. So I'm going to go ahead and open my syringe. And I'm going to pull back. Normally I do not prep my syringes like this. I just haven't found a way to prep my sterile syringes the way I do my other ones. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and over the floor, kind of get the saline out. This is primed. We're going to go ahead and take our needle, take the end off of the tubing, take the end off of the clave connector, and put the clave connector onto the needle. Then we're going to put the clave connector on the syringe and twist. And now we're going to go ahead and prime the needle. Basically, I'm just pushing water through it so that there's no air left. And I wait for a couple of drips to come out. Then I can go ahead and set this back onto the sterile field. And now we are ready to put the needle in. So for this part, I stand up because I need to be closer to the mirror because I don't have very good farsight vision. I'm going to take my needle and I like to access sideways, meaning the tubing is going to come out to the left instead of going straight down. It's completely up to you. So now we're going to take the end off of the needle, throw it on the floor. Now I am going to put my hand on my skin, the left hand. Technically this means my left hand isn't super sterile, it's just considered clean. But that's okay at this point in the accessing thing, that's completely fine. So we're going to hold it like this. And we're going to avoid putting the needle back into the same hole that I previously used. So we're just going to move it over a little bit. So now I've pushed the needle all the way in. I'm going to take my left hand and I am going to pull back and check for blood return. As you can see, I have blood return. So now I am going to go ahead. Now, because I don't have a nurse or anyone to help me, I'm going to stick the syringe into my shirt. Technically, this is now no longer sterile, um, but that's okay. So now I'm gonna take my left hand, which is just the clean hand, and open my um, skin protector, which this part is hard. I forgot how I did it last time. I'm actually just gonna open it like this. At this point, um, you still want to be as sterile as possible, but because the needle is already in, that is the most sterile part. Um, so now I'm going to take skin protector and rub it all over where the bandage is going to be. But you never want to put this underneath where the needle is because um, you don't want that under the needle. So you just rub it all over the area until it becomes sticky, and then that just basically means you can throw it away. All right, so now. You're going to wait until your gloves stop being sticky because that means that the adhesive on your skin or not the adhesive, the skin barrier that you just put on your skin is dry. So it's still a little bit sticky. So I'm going to wait again. You never fan the area because that's fanning bacteria into the sterile area. Okay. Now it seems pretty dry. So we're going to go ahead and take our, why can I never think of the name? Opsite, I guess you can call it. Um, this is going to go over the area. So you don't want to touch the backing of the, the sticky part. I need to move this because we want this to be, there we go. Now we're going to put this in the middle and then kind of push it down. All right, I've pushed it down as best as I can. And with this particular dressing, there is a coating on top that you can peel back and just the adhesive is left on your skin or the bandage. 
So now you can kind of see my issue I have with my particular port. My port sticks out quite far from my body and then the needle itself sticks out quite far. That creates this tenting issue, which is why one bandage does not cover my entire um, thing. Technically, yes, it all is pressed down, but it is very close on these lower and upper edges. So that's why I put another one in the opposite direction. However, before I do that, because we were kind of messing with it, we're gonna go ahead and check for blood return again. Um, technically, I am no longer sterile and I don't need to be sterile, um, but I was touching my skin and stuff and obviously this was in my shirt, it's not sterile, but because it's covered, um, this is no longer sterile. So as you can see, I pulled back and I got blood return. That is perfect. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and flush that back and we're gonna go ahead and put the second bandage on. But I no longer need my sterile gloves because this is not a sterile, it no longer needs to be sterile. So we're gonna take our other dressing and we are going to open it. And I do not put these on the proper way. There's like a three-step system and I don't like doing it that way. So now I'm gonna go ahead and find the middle here, put it on push it lightly down. You don't ever want to push the dressing on super firmly. That's going to push the port or put a lot of pressure on the needle to push into your port and it's very uncomfortable. I'm not super happy with how the dressing is around this tubing. It just didn't really go in my favor this time, but I do want to purchase some more IV 3000 dressings in a smaller size so that I can put one right over this tubing area because this is where the most pressure is and where it's most apt for the dressing to be peeled back. So now I'm gonna go ahead and lift this up. And as you can see, I'm a lot more secure now. Um, I have a lot more dressing covering up here and down here. That way it's just not gonna peel up. Um, but the cool thing about these dressings is they come with these strips that you can use. I am slightly irritated by these strips. They're not as good for sensitive skin, but I do use them because they don't bother me bad enough. So I'm gonna put one on. I'm not putting it on top of the dressing, I'm putting it right next to it, and I'm putting it over that tubing. So that way, if I do get pressure on the tubing, hopefully it should tug this before it tugs um, the actual dressing. So I'm actually just gonna push the rest of the saline through the port. And now I'm going to take the other strip and I'm going to put one this direction. This again helps another layer so that it's not being pulled too much. Again, everyone has their own method on what they like to do. So everyone's gonna, you know, have a different way. And we are gonna go ahead and flush the line with heparin. This is only needed because I am not going to use my port today. I am not going to do a saline infusion, but I will be doing one tomorrow morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and use hand sanitizer again. And we are going to prep, oh, this is how I prep my non-sterile syringes. So I push down on the counter and on the plunger. So you push down. I don't know if you could hear that, but there was a little click. Then you're going to put it the other way. And with the packaging, you're gonna open the lid just enough so that it's loose. And then you're gonna push the air out of the syringe. The way that nurses teach you to do it, they take the whole cover off, put the cover upside down, pull back, prime, and then put the cover back on. That just causes a lot more uh, potential for contamination or for um, bacteria to get in there. So this is just an extra precaution. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and open this and have it ready. And then I'm gonna go ahead and take my alcohol prep pad and disconnect from the saline. And I'm gonna go ahead and scrub the line. Even though technically everything under here was sterile, um, you always want to scrub your clave connector with alcohol. So now that it, that is clean, we can go ahead and take our heparin, make sure again there's no air in it, put it on the end of the clave connector and push it through the line. You're gonna push, pause, push, pause, push, pause, push, pause. That just helps break up any clots that could potentially be forming in your clot. Again, I just got perfect blood return, so that's probably not the case but it's always good to do that. Next, you're going to open your other alcohol pad and you are going to 
clean the end of your line. Some people might think this is excessive, but when it's coming down to your health and your infection rate and your chance of getting sepsis, you can never be too careful. So you always wanna be as careful as possible. So now that that's clean, we're actually gonna put a clean swab cap on top. Swab caps contain alcohol, which will keep the end of your line clean. There's also a type of cap called, ooh, a Kiros cap. Um, and that contains chlorhexidine. So now I am done accessing, I can go ahead and take my mask off, but that's basically it. That's how you access a port and do not use this advice as medical advice. Never access your port without your doctor's permission and without being trained by a professional. Please know that a lot of nurses have different protocols on how they access your port. And please know that all nurses do not know what they're doing. I know it seems like a medical professional should know how to properly do a sterile procedure. However, every single nurse in a hospital who has access to my port has done it incorrectly. Um, I was taught by um, my aunt who is a nurse, but she is trained in how to teach people how to do sterile protocol. And she taught me how to do it correctly. I also reached out to other people who have ports and asked them for their opinions because a lot of the pe times people who have their own ports ports actually know more about ports than the nurses. So that's how I learned. I spoke to many people and I found the best way that works for me and the most sterile way. So my camera died and cut me off, but basically don't forget to ever speak up. If anyone is doing something to your port that you're not comfortable with, please tell them, no, I'm not comfortable with that or ask them to stop or question if they know what they're doing. Um, I've had to question people many, many times. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. Leave a comment down below on any other port care videos you guys want to see or port videos or videos about anything I guess. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you very soon on a new video. Bye!